fellow investors. Welcome to another episode of Ritter on Real Estate, where we teach you how to passively invest like a pro. Today, my guest is David Richter. David is the author of Profit First for Real Estate, and he's the owner of Simple CFO, which is a, a company that sounds like helps uh, real estate investors with many things, including cash flow management, which is something we're going to talk a little bit about today. So David, thank you so much for being here on the show. Thanks for having me, Kent. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, so let's uh, let's start at the top like we always do and tell people a little bit about who you are and how you got to be where you are today. Sure. So I took a lot of the same journey that a lot of people who are listening probably did. I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Uh, I read it in college. A good friend gave it to me, and that was the difference maker for me thinking differently. Uh, than I ever had before instead of just going to school getting a job you know going to work so that's when I started buying real estate started hanging around the right type of people to real estate investors and actually started working with some investors where we were doing five deals a month and then scaled it to about 30 deals a month so I've seen a bunch of different exit strategies I've sat in a lot of the different types of seats inside of real estate as well too one of the seats that resonated with me, because if you're watching this, you can definitely tell I like the numbers. I'm a numbers guy, but that's where I really did. I, I dove into the financials of the business and how they told the story of the business. It was really fascinating to me. Like we could be doing all these deals, but if we're not making the money, like why are we doing that? And that's where at this company, we were doing 30 deals a month. Sounds pretty awesome. But at the end of the day, we were spending like 31 deals a month. You know, it was like, that's where we were bringing in a lot, but we were also, you know, shoveling out a lot as well too. So bringing in, shoveling it all out. That's what got me thinking of like, there has to be a better way than this. Like, can't we focus on the net profitability? Which during that whole time, I was building my rental portfolio, sold it all off, and then moved across the country, helped another investor, went in there, partnered with him, built up his financial his financials and really helped him get solid financials in place and we were able to refinance his portfolio get hundreds of thousands of dollars in his pocket like it was life-changing for him because he came to me and said this is life-changing like knowing where i stand what i'm spending what i'm making knowing where i am in my properties getting this money back out that's where i said i, I need to just help people at least give know where they are give them a chance you know mm -hmm. and that's where I started Simple CFO just to be able to explain the numbers <laughs> to investors. But that's when I also got introduced to the book Profit First by a mentor. Read that book in one sitting, took 10 pages of notes, and knew that was going to be the cash flow management piece as well. So that's kind of how I got into all that side of the, you know, the financial world. And then from there, it was just implementing that system plus creating Simple CFO and helping now hundreds of investors and writing the book Profit First for Real Estate Investing, kind of going on that journey from baby investor to serious seasoned investor to now helping people and those investors make bottom line profit and get that true financial freedom they've really wanted because they now know where every dollar is going. So that's kind of my journey from then till now. Sure. Well, that's powerful stuff. I mean, obviously, like you said, why why are we doing all this investing if uh, if we're not ultimately making making money out of it, right? right? And, yes. Um, and I think that's something that a lot of small, you know, whether you call yourself an investor, or you're a small business owner, uh, I think that's a lot. It's an area where a lot of, of folks struggle, right? Is oh, yeah. ca cash flow management and how are you, like you said, understanding what's coming in, ins and outflows, right? How are you preparing for the future? Um, so what were, what were some of the things as you started digging in, in your own business to say, you know, as you started saying like you're doing 31 deals or 30 deals a month, but you're spending 31 deals worth of money. What were some of the things you found out as you started digging in, like some of the inefficiencies that you saw? One of the big ones was we scaled up employees too, but we never knew like how many employees do we need in order to do the amount of deals that we need to do. It always just felt like we hired when we felt like we need a, a hole filled and not like, is there a system, a process broken, or is there something that could go there besides hiring another person? Because we scaled up from about 
five people to about 25 people. So there was like a decent sized team there mm -hmm. in this office. So that's where it was one of the huge inefficiencies was just having a, you know, a, a person heavy team. And I don't, I don't mind that as long as there's margin, as long as you, you know, you plan for that. But it was just like, oh, we've got a need, fill it. And hopefully we make money later. Well, that later never came. You know, so that was where it was like that was one of the definitely the big inefficiencies in the business as we were digging in. Gotcha. So so hiring people and focusing on bodies versus creating a better process. Is that how you define it? Yeah, exactly. Just hiring for the sake of hiring versus hiring for not only a specific need, but like making sure that this is the best thing to do for the business. Is it an actual hire versus a system, a process that we could build out automation or a system, you know, like something that we could put in there, but we were just mm -hmm. hiring, hiring, hiring. Gotcha. So yeah, definitely people and labor is always one of your biggest expenses when you have a business typically, right? One of the best Are, investments too, but it yeah. has to be an investment. It can't just be the, <laughs> can't just be the, Oh, we've got a hole. Let's just fill it. It's gotta be okay. What's the best thing for the business at this time? Yeah, absolutely. Were there anything else that, that struck you as you started digging into your own business? Yeah, there's a, I mean, there was a lot of things, just not knowing. A lot of people, and I've seen this true in a lot of the people that we're working with too, is just not knowing how much you're making and spending on a monthly basis, just sitting mm -hmm. down and looking at those numbers and like in black and white. A lot of people are scared of those numbers and looking at those numbers, but just being able to have those numbers in front of you is very powerful, even if they suck. That's why a lot of people don't want to. They think they're going to look right. at it and it's going to suck. But so many times in, in that business and in other businesses like that we've helped now, it's just it's so powerful to sit down and look at it because now you can affect change. That was one of the things, too, was just having a regular meeting going over. How much are we making? How much are we spending? Like, what are the different marketing channels and what are we spending there and what's our return? And we didn't really have a good setup for that and, you know, to be able to give good feedback. And that was one of the things that we started implementing. That's where the red flag started to pop up. Like, why are we, <laughs> why are we killing ourselves for 30 deals a month if we're spending just like a drunken sailor all the time? You know, money's just mm -hmm. going out the door as fast as possible. Yeah. So you talked about kind of understanding where the different where, where cash is going, right? Where are yeah. you spending money, right? Exactly. Breaking that down and then understanding within those different buckets, you know, getting to, and one thing you mentioned was, are we actually getting an ROI, right? Are we getting a return on our investment for the money we're spending, whether it's yeah. marketing, marketing is a great example, right? You can throw marketing dollars at a lot of different places, but how do you really know what's effective if you're not measuring right. it, right? Exactly. A lot of people don't measure that. That's what, you know, and you hear like the terminology and the cliches of like KPIs and key performance indicators, mm -hmm. but those are great. Like we have to have some sort of numbers that we're measuring against to see, does this work or not? Right. And like when we work with people, we sit down and we do a return on marketing analysis to see right from the books, like right from what you're spending, what are you spending versus how many leads came through that and how mm -hmm. many contracts, you know, to see how, what is that actual return? And some people have pivoted their marketing or their exit strategies, like they were doing wholesale and flip, and then they went to one or the other because one was super inefficient. But people don't know the power that that unlocks until they see it in black and white and say, oh, shoot, you know, like right. we thought wholesale was better and faster, but like we are actually taking longer than some of our flips, you know, for some of these deals or vice versa. Or like we thought we were squeezing the extra lemon, you know, the lemonade out here you know out of these flips but that's mm -hmm. where we go into it and it's like yeah you're making double the profit but it's taking you four times as long as a wholesale so it's like why that doesn't match up you know like the speed that you're doing it is you know two times slower than a wholesale deal so just yeah. having that in your hands is really powerful yeah absolutely and i think you can go levels and levels deeper right as oh, you yeah. continue to get into stuff but Big time. just just thinking about it at like the top. So somebody starts to work with simple CFO, right? Yeah. I mean, what are, what are the, some of the, the things that you know are the low hanging fruit that, that you start to immediately look at? Well, when people go on their entrepreneurial journey, they're usually reading like the rich dad, poor dads, those types of books and, and that stuff. When a lot of people come to us, we know that they haven't read a lot of financial, you know, business financial 101 book. So we're not putting that in front of them. We're just telling them, here's what you need to know to let, we call it laying the financial foundation. Okay. Like, here's some of the key things that you need. And number one, 
is like we got to put the right team in place we have to have a good bookkeeper there we have to have a good cpa so you're like especially in real estate so you can mm -hmm. take you know all the depreciation and all the rewards and benefits that real estate offer so it's like do we have the right team and are they giving us the numbers on a consistent basis and are they accurate it's like we have to have just some of the basic foundational core things set up first a lot of people come to us because it's just like the e-myth that you read or anything. A lot of the real estate investors are the technicians. They're good at getting the deal. Like I like right. getting the deal. I, I get that mentality and that mindset. And then we come in and say, hey, let's make sure you're actually a business owner too and know some of these solid financial things so you can sleep at night because one of the reasons most people lose sleep is they don't have a grasp on their financials and they lose that right. control of their money. So it's like, here's some of those foundational things. So it is getting the team in place, getting those numbers, and we do implement profit first right up front as well too. It's the cash flow management system that is built for the entrepreneur to see where the money is like with bank accounts and knowing it it's like the envelope method you know mm -hmm. but for with online bank accounts so that's where we implement that as well too because that way we can at least give them the power of managing the cash even if it ta even if they have a because we have people come to us making millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars with a mess like they've never either they've never entered anything before they've been doing it on spreadsheets or paper it's like we, while we're doing that we can at least get them up and running on profit first and something to where they're still managing their cash because you have to mm -hmm. manage the dollars no matter what happens right. so it's like let's lay the foundation for a solid financially successful business and then let's also lay the foundation for a very cash profitable business as well too so that's what we do when they first come in gotcha so it starts with kind of peeling back the curtain and yes. good you know good bad or ugly understanding what what's going on right yeah. so and I, I think you're exactly right is is people don't they don't want to do that because they're scared of what they'll see yeah right and, and you think by pushing that off that you don't have to worry about it but I think in reality that like you said a lot of people lose sleep because yeah. of that unknown right because there's there's an unknown out there and you're just avoiding it and that's not something that not something that's healthy. It's not something that, that helps your business either. And it's not something that, that helps you to sleep better. So the idea is, even if it's ugly, understand it because you, unless you're measuring it, you can't change it. Right. Right. We've had some ugly situations too, when they do reveal it. And you know what, those people that were going from like out of business have turned themselves around because if they would have kept going the same way and just keeping their head in the dark, they would have ran out of money. And it's like some of them were the to the tune of like they've been losing hundreds of thousands of dollars every year. Mm -hmm. And like just being able to see that and like that their loans were almost floating them. But then being able to say, hey, we need to stop this. What what do we have right now that can help change this? But it, it just helps them ask better questions. Yeah, that's the real thing. The finances are not some magic voodoo dust out there or anything. It's just it gives you knowledge of your own business to ask yourself better questions to be able to affect better change and honestly put more profit and more dollars in your pocket. Mm -hmm. That's what it does. So it's like, I know what you're saying. Like a lot of people are scared of that. That's what we're saying here. And we have, we've had some horrible situations and then they turn themselves around because they see that they can, because now they can do that. But we've also had people where they're surprised, like, Hey, we're actually, we're doing well. What else can we do in order to get to a better position as well too? How fast can we build our reserves? Can we get to six months, 12 months as fast as possible? So just having that focus as well too, because if you're mm -hmm. doing well, now you can focus those extra dollars to do what you want them to do. Reserves, invest people, you know, expansion, other markets, you know, different marketing channels or more into the marketing channels, but you have to have that clarity. Yeah, no, exactly. So, and it sounds like it's not just what I would call accounting or financial reporting. It's also uh, business performance reporting, whether it's marketing right. and, and it sounds like other areas, right? You're putting metrics around all these different things. So you can understand where dollars should be allocated as you start to get a, a handle on your cash flow. Exactly. Because most people have a bookkeeper or a CPA. That's the traditional accounting that we think in our head. It's all mm -hmm. the rear, you know, it's the rear view mirror. It's okay. They've entered the transactions or they've done my tax return. You know, now we can plan for the future. Well, no, the CFO comes in 
and is more like the GPS. Like, okay, let's take what you have today. Let's take in what you've done. And like, let's build the roadmap for where you want to go. And mm -hmm. like, as we're laying down the track, almost like, you know, like a, a pipeline or something, it's like, how do we have to pivot if something happens along that way? Or we forecast the cash and then a property doesn't close, you know, go figure. Mm -hmm. It's like, how do we pivot there? Like, do we need extra reserves for that when that comes through? Or some people we work with, we work with all different sizes, shapes of entrepreneurs here, like people doing five deals a year to five deals a day. You know, like we do, we cover kind of the gamut there with real estate investors. And some of them are like, how often do you sell the properties? You know, like how often do you do that? If it's once a quarter, we have to make sure is your cash flow going to sustain you for one property a quarter? Or if you're selling one a week, like are we going to make sure if we miss a week that we'll be able to cover that week while, you know, the property got pushed back or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. It's really the forward facing the business, the cash flow versus just what you think of traditional accounting. Let's enter stuff in a ledger and then talk about it at the end of the month. Do we have that type of stuff too? Yes. But that's not what we know drives the business and brings real value. It's more meeting with the entrepreneur and saying, here's the numbers. What can we do with them to make them better? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And no, I think that's a fantastic uh, way to lay that out because you said there, there's a whole typical accounting that is focused on the rear view, right? right? It's all all that stuff that's looking behind you, but how are you using that info to make better decisions going forward? And so I, I appreciate that perspective, more of a strategic approach to to your business. Yeah, exactly. So are there uh, are there some tools that you like to use uh, as you're setting up a business and that you're uh, you know put, putting people onto your program? Like, are there some tools you found to be really valuable for folks? Well. I know it's one of the big ones out there in software is for financial people. We do like QuickBooks Online. It's just very easy to be able to share, to be able to pull it up, like have it on your phone as the entrepreneur. Like if you need the data and you need it quickly, that's the way to go. And there's so much automation too. If you have good financial people, they can automate a ton in that in that specific software. So I definitely always recommend that. We usually switch people over to that if they start working with us because of how powerful it is and the automations we can put in. We also implement a CFO dashboard. It's kind of proprietary to us. It's called the Simple CFO Dashboard. And it is, it's a simple Google Sheet that starts with seven tabs of like how to, you know, cash flow project, how to do the profit first allocations, how to do an assessment on your business. And like we implement that with our clients. Then from there, we do other tabs in there, like if there's specific projects, but those are kind of the foundational things that we use right now. And I love the, I love the Google Sheets because you can share real easily and you, they can see the updates in real time as the numbers are being plugged in. And it gives them somewhere there. It's like, this is the one place for the finances, you know, to come in and for us to have those conversations. So those are two of the ones we've also started using ramp a lot for our bigger clients. It's a, it's a very streamlined expense software where, you know, where you go in and you put in, you know, all your recurring stuff, but then also it gives you great reporting, great, um, you know, accountability, and then also has good, you know, approval processes. We've used stuff like bill.com in the past and receipts and, you know, like all these different softwares and ramp has kind of just kind of bundled everything else up. Uh, we like it even better than a lot of the QuickBooks online bill pay and stuff. We still use some of that, but if you want to look into ramp, Dot com that's a really good one uh, as well too for just streamlining your your financial department gotcha well great appreciate those tips and I think those will be valuable for people to check out so as you're thinking about um you know all these clients that that you work with right i'm sure that we talked a little bit about your business kind of what what was your specific issue but I, i'm sure that now you've worked with all kinds of different clients i'm sure that you see some common themes can you share some of those common themes with us maybe help some people that are listening uh maybe it'll put a light bulb on for them maybe they'll say hey yeah i'm doing that i, I need to make a change most investors feel like they are making money but they feel broke so they feel like, hey, I'm doing a lot of deals, but I'm feeling broke. So first we might want to go into the psychology of the 